What's happening everyone? Welcome back to the shop. Now I just hit 200 subscribers over the weekend there. It's a tiny milestone but a milestone nonetheless. So I thought I'd do a celebratory shop tour just to give you guys a look at the crown jewels. That and the fact that I'm uh, up to my nuts and work so I have some time to even scratch myself let alone start a new project. So I thought I'd do a quick vid and just give you a quick look around the shop, show you what I have, show you what I need to get and uh, it might be somewhat entertaining. We'll have a walk about. People seem to like these things on YouTube. I know I enjoy a quick peek around someone else's shop, so uh, I'll give you a look around my one now. So thanks to all the new subscribers who've joined the channel. I appreciate it a lot. Um, plenty of projects on the way, but for now, let's take a wander around this shop and uh, I'll give you a quick look at the crown jewels. Let's do it. Right, we'll start in the center of the shop and uh, as I go to start this video, it just occurred to me, I have no idea how I'm going to shoot this. You can't actually follow me around the shop, so we'll have to do it stationary from a tripod. But start with the table saw. This is the centerpiece of the shop. I've done a bunch of videos on this already, so if any of that interests you, I'll leave some links up here or here. They'll be there somewhere. I've made a crosscut sled for it. I've done some restoration work on it, and we've fixed the crosscut sliding carriage. It's a Kitty 1619 table saw, and when I bought it, it was pretty rough. Um, but it is cutting sweetly now and that crosscut carriage is uh, sweet as a nut. The only thing that's still missing on it is the adjustment handle just down here for adjusting the angle of the blade. The actual handle and the screw is missing so when you release it on the front here the whole motor just swings to the side and uh, yeah it's kind of gets your angle from there. It's a bit of a pain in the balls but um, that's something I'm going to have to fix. So I have to beg, borrow or steal or even make a new screw, a new handle to sort that out. But that's the last job that needs to be done on this table saw. Um, once that's sorted, I'll have myself actually a top notch table saw that didn't cost me very much money. It just took a bit of elbow grease and um, yeah, just a bit of work to put it right. So again, links in the description here or up here if you want to check out some work I've done on this table saw. Let's crack on around the shop. Right, just by the door beside my bandsaw and just opposite my table saw, this is where my planar and tixer, thicknesser is going, planar, tick, I can't even speak, planar thicknesser is going to go, or if you're in the United States, a joint or planar. So that's my space for that. And also my dust extraction system, when I get it up and running, is going to sit there. That should be, hopefully in a few weeks time, I'll have these. So I'll do a vid on both of them and uh, it, they will be probably second hand again so i have my eye on a couple of nice ones and uh, they might record a little bit of restoration work but it might make a good project video sorting out the planar thickness are and uh, well the dust extraction system is fairly straightforward so they're going to go there saw blades on the wall and my bandsaw blades so this is my bandsaw let's have a look at this right the bandsaw let's have a quick look at this one this is a record power bs 300e um, again, I actually got this second hand, I got a really good deal on it, but it was like brand new when I bought it. Um, it's a ton weight, it's on a carriage and wheels, so it's, it's easy enough to move around, but man, trying to carry this thing on your own, it's, it's unreal. I really like Record Power Tools, they're really well made and um, they're not overly expensive, which is great, you know. This particular bandsaw, you have a 12 inch throat, I believe, so that's a depth between your blade and here, and you have an 8 inch depth of cut. So it's not the biggest bandsaw in the world, but it's not the smallest either. And it's perfect for what I need when I'm making guitars. That's the kind of, for cutting headstocks and stuff, you have plenty of clearance here. So uh, one of the best things about, or one of the best things to have on a bandsaw is a depth of cut. Especially if you want to do veneers or you want to resaw timber, having a nice big long depth of cut and a big fence is important. Um, like I say, it's not a particularly big bandsaw, but it does me, um, it's good, it's accurate. I don't know what else to say about it really. It's a record power bandsaw. So uh, yeah, it's pretty good. Let's crack on. Okay, moving around to a not particularly exciting wall. It's just I have my clamps here. And uh, when you're woodworking, you can never have too many clamps. And I certainly don't have too many clamps. I need to buy a whole blast of F clamps and stuff. So I need to get online and order some of them because uh, every time I do a project, I'm always short clamps. You never have a bloody enough. And like I say, I certainly don't have enough. It's kind of a meager showing there. Over here, just bits and bobs, screws and stuff. I hate these things. So this thing is going to go. Um, I'm going to get a floor standing tilt, clear tilt um, rack. So you're going to get those tilt boxes or buckets that just tilt out nicely. 
and you can see everything, label it all up and keep all your screws and fixtures and fittings in that. So uh, I have one of those ordered, so it should be here shortly. Um, so this has to go. Um, just a shop vac down here. That's just an ordinary shop vac, nothing special about that. Um, just a DVR uh, security system there, which I managed to scavenge off a job, which was handy. Free stuff is always good. So uh, yeah, there's not much more in this corner. Let's move on around. Okay, moving around then. It's one of my workbenches here. This is just a kitchen worktop with some kitchen units. Um, you can pick up kitchen worktops, brand new damaged ones for very little money. Keep an eye out for them because they make fantastic worktops for your workshop. And ki kitchen carcasses as well. Handy pre-made cupboards uh, to hold the bench. So um, people are always throwing these things out. So they make great units for your workshop. Keep eyes out for them. It's a good little tip. Um, just workbench or on the workbench then I have just some voices set up. This is actually a record number six that was broken and re-welded and uh, it needs some new jaws and a little bit of work done to it. But um, I've been, I have been doing a bit of restoration work on it. It's a pretty solid voice, a pretty big heavy duty voice. So um, just need to replace the jaws and that should be good to go. Just various drills. These are some D-wall drills. I've had these for about 15 years and uh, they're still going so I'll hang on to them. I actually, I need to build a power tool rack somewhere around here so I might do a project video of that. I want a charging station and somewhere to hang up all my drills and impact drivers and stuff. Uh, so that's gonna go there somewhere. This stuff isn't gonna stay on the wall but uh, yeah, it does the job for now. So uh, let's move on down the workbench. I really need to get some sort of wide angle lens. I just have the one lens for this camera, so it's hard to get these shots, but just some, some of the stuff that's on my bench, oh, just a Milwaukee radio here. This is a Weller soldering station, and this is a cracking bit of kit. I actually bought this. We were um, doing some maintenance work and uh, repairs on some machinery that I work for a company that I do a lot of work for. They're a pharmaceutical company, so we were working on some pharmaceutical machines. So I wanted a really good, top of the range soldering iron. So we got this one, it's a serious bit of kit. Um, so I use it for the guitars and stuff now. Uh, it, it's just an amazing, the attachments you can get for, for removing chips and stuff is fantastic. And it comes up to temperature so quickly. I don't know if the camera will see this now, but it's a Weller WX1 soldering station. Just watch the temperature come up on this thing. Pretty quick. There you go and it's at operating temperature there now. There's 380 degrees Celsius in a blink of an eye, and it kind of goes into a sleep mode as well, where it'll drop the iron down to about 180 degrees, and as soon as you touch it and pick it up, within about three seconds, it's back to operating temperature of 380 degrees, and obviously you can set the temperature to whatever you want. It comes with a whole bunch of different attachments, heat guns, the whole lot. Um, it's an amazing bit of kit. It's not cheap, but again, the work I, wasn't, I was doing required some top-end equipment, so, uh, now it's in my shop, which is nice. So let's uh, move on down the bench. Put this guy back. We'll have a look from the other side. Right, moving along down. This is all my hand tools, I suppose, for woodworking. I don't really own too many of ex expensive hand tools. I want to get some nice chisels and a couple of nice hand planes. Um, I have a nice set of Lulio tools that I got from Crimson Guitars. Um, check them, them guys out. They're pretty cool and their YouTube channel is is pretty fantastic as well. I really like it. Um, I have a gent saw, or it's actually a fret saw, but it's very same as a gentleman saw. I have a leveling beam, a guitar straight edge. It's a notch straight edge with two scale lengths on either side. So you have the Gibson and Fender scale length essentially. Um, that's just a little fret level checker. Again, it's just a couple of different size straight edges that are fret rocker. So you can check for high frets and stuff. Very simple. A um, couple of foils then, guitar foils, just for doing some fret work. Um, I have some level of beams, or some, um, sorry, some radius blocks. This is a 12 inch, this is a 9.5, and I also have a 14 inch, which is a pretty flat radius. The last guitar I made, I did a compound radius, so it starts at 9.5 and works its way down to 12 inch. So you have a more rounded neck up around where you are doing your open chords, and a flatter um, fretboard when you're doing down this end of the neck, doing a bit of solo stuff. So uh, yeah, I like uh, compound radius necks. These are my hand planes then. Um, I've done a review of Faithful hand planes before. I have a couple of them left. They're not bad, they're really cheap, but if you put a bit of work into setting them up, um, you can actually get yourself some pretty decent hand planes if you're a hobbyist and you're only starting out and you wanna get some hand planes in your shop. 
and um, you will have to put a bit of work into them. I've done um, a video on this before. I'll leave a link somewhere down here in the description or maybe it's a card up here. It might pop on the screen now in a second. I also have some really nice um, Stanley Sweethearts. Now they're from the actual Stanley Sweetheart era, which was 1925 to 1932, I think. Don't quote me on that, but it's sometime around then. This is a Stanley number four and a half. I get the camera to focus on that there. This is, um, yeah, this one is made in the USA. It's a Stanley Sweetheart era. It has the corrugated sole on it there. Uh, this was a complete restoration. I got this for about 14 euros on eBay and uh, it's a really nice plane from the sweetheart era which is kind of the sought after era then i have a number three here this one actually has the, the sweetheart blade on it let's see if we can get the camera to focus on that there you go so you can see the sw come on camera work with me hopefully you can see that there this the sw is just right there and that stanley works with the heart on it and they call it the sweetheart era so um that's a number four and a number three and they are my favorite planes they're over 100 years old and um they're nicely restored they're the rosewood handles um really nicely made and uh, like i say it's great to use tools that are over 100 years old they will woodwork on for another 100 years they're fantastic um like none of those i picked them up really cheap you keep an eye out on ebay for um hand planes that's the best place to get them they don't take that much work to restore um just flatten the soles give them a quick scrub up and they're ready to go again so it's a good way to get cheap hand planes and uh, you might find some gems like those ones every once in a while one pops up so keep an eye out stanley sweetheart so the era 1922 to 35 i think don't quote me on that but check it up online you'll have a seat yourself uh everything else then is just cheap chisels foils and rasps i think i've spoke about this guy before the japanese shinto rasp uh, one of my favorite woodworking tools i use this to make all my guitar necks and uh, shaping guitars it's great for removing material i also oh, can you still see that in the shot so that's a maple handled axe restoration did up there so uh, that guy basically used that to completely make that that axe handle um, fantastic tool again nice and cheap i think they're about 14 euros about 12 pounds and a uh, serious bit of kit for removing material so uh hopefully this has been interesting let's keep going around the shop before you all get bored to death right this is my main woodwork and workbench then i've been asked about this on a few of my videos people leave comments below and say can you tell me about the workbench what is it did you make it yeah i did make it um it's made from just four by twos or two by fours whatever way you want to call them depending on again what side of the atlantic you're on it's the same thing this is just construction timber glued together laminate top with a tool well it's actually um the paul sellers workbench i leave a link in the description below to check out that video i think it's one of his first workbench videos um now he didn't make it as big as this i don't think and he also didn't um drill the dog holes i have dog holes all the way on this bench so my end voice has a dog on it and i have some veritas bench dogs which i can set up anywhere down the bench again it's handy just for clamping a long bit of timber if you're planing so you might have seen me do that in one of my guitar videos i've um I planed and squared some stock and I do it on this bench. It's really handy. It's bloody solid and it's cheap to build and it's a cracking bench. So definitely go check out that video. Um, it's just all two by fours glued together. The legs and stuff is just a frame. Again, two two by fours glued together. You just plane everything down. It's all hand tools I built this with. Just the hand tools and a drill. That's that's it that's all you need you build it with a handsaw some hand planes and a drill it doesn't require any machines whatsoever and you get yourself a cracking workbench the two um bench voices then these obviously i had to buy these um i've one on this end again for working with the dog system and i have one just on the side here again these are erwin uh, woodworking voices again they're quick release voices just some wooden jaws in them nothing fancy i just added a shelf to it underneath here so uh, it's just storage space for things like uh just a swivel voice again just mounted to a piece of timber it's a handy thing to do you can just throw them up on the bench or if i want i can just clamp them 
clamp it in there. And now I have a swivel voice. Voice? Voice? What the hell is a voice? A swivel voice that I can work on this bench. Um, yeah, that's it. A two by four workbench. I think the, the total on the materials for this was somewhere around 100 euros. Um, obviously the, the bench voices, they were a little bit more expensive. They were, I think were 100 quid a piece, something like that. So, but you don't have to add them yet. Again, if you watch Paul Seller's video, he didn't put in the dogs. He doesn't like bench dogs for whatever reason. I do. And uh, he didn't add a voice to his. Again, if you're tight for space, you don't have to build it this big. You don't have to build two sides. You can just build this side and the tool well and shove that against the wall. Um, the idea of the tool well is just very simple. You can leave your tools in it and you can throw your workpiece across it. So your workpiece, depending on the size of it, can sit over your tools. You can just leave them down in the well. That's all that is. And uh, it's actually a great idea. And it's a great designed bench. I'll, uh, if you want a more in-depth video on this thing, I can do it. But uh, I think Paul Sellers is the man and he's going to do it way better than I can. So check that out. Let's move on. Right, moving on around then. This is just my toolboxes. Um, they're just Halford's toolbox. This is the industrial one. I don't think they make this anymore. They've actually a new one out, but it's a fairly robust toolbox. I really like the Halford's advanced stuff. Um, it's not expensive, it's pretty cheap tools. Like I have all the socket sets and the, the spanners. Again, it's all just Halford advanced stuff. But the beauty of it is, if any of it breaks, it has a lifetime warranty. You just walk back out to the shop with a socket or a spanner and say, hey, this is bent or broke, and they just go, there's a new one. No problem, no questions asked, just there you go. So that's great, you can't argue any more than that. Um, just tapes and adhesives, drill bits are all in here, taps. Uh, all different various types of snips, cutters, tin snips, shears, various tools like that. Just some measurement stuff, so vernier calipers, measuring tapes. My diagnostic laptop, which isn't actually in there at the minute, so I have to get that back. I've loaned it out to someone. Uh, it's just a diagnostic, lap diagnostic laptop and interface for working on cars. It's impossible to work on modern cars without a computer now because everything is computerized, so you need to have one of those. I do a bit of work on cars as well, also on motorbikes. Actually, this is the first time in a long time that I'm actually without a motorbike, so uh, I need to get a couple of bikes into the shop. So that might happen sometime in the near future. We'll see. Uh, again, just a cheaper toolbox, various different socket sets. I've built up loads of them over the years. I have more spanners than I know what to do with. And uh, yeah, oils, whatever, motorbike stuff, car stuff, bits and bobs. Let's move on, this is kind of boring. <laughs> Right, on down the line a bit further then, I just have my various guitars that I've built. Um, I've already done a video on this one, a complete, um, a complete how-to video on this from start to finish, how to build a guitar. Um, this one turned out pretty good. Again, it has a few flaws and a few mistakes that I would like to put right, but um, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Some patina copper for con the control cavity. It's a neck true design, so it's maple and uh, sapili. Um, cherry fretboard which is dark and up really nice and um, push push pots so it's coiled split or coiled tapped I should say um, so you have two tones single volume and just your standard three-way switch so uh, yeah string through body with um, a tone bar or furl bar they call that that was a bit of a disaster so when I was drilling this out the holes drifted together so we had to go for this option which actually turned out pretty nice um, lock and tuners, various bits and bobs, bone nut, and um, yeah, that's it. Again, there's a whole video on this, so I'm not going to get too far into it now. Let's rock on. Some force guitars that I made down here. I've just scavenged them for parts. This one, again, is that strat that everybody seems to love. Again, it is pretty nice. Um, I'm going to color that other strat that I built something like this, but maybe purple, something like that. We'll see how that goes. I haven't decided what I'm going to do with that yet. Um, various paints and stuff down there for model making. I used to do a load of model making, not so much anymore. Milwaukee pack out box here. This is what I bring to work with me every single day. Actually, I'll give you a quick look at this. Um, this can be interesting enough. Let's have a look. Again, I really need a wide angle lens. So in top, just have a drill driver. I bought one of the rapid chargers. It does actually um, speed up the whole charging process, which is handy. Can you see that? There you go. Underneath that then, just pop him off. 
these are tools that I use every day of the week. So the multi-tool is invaluable. There's flush cuts, cutting out boxes and walls. There's a, everything you can do with this thing. They're an amazing bit of kit. Various um, toolboxes, again. Whoop. The beast, the Milwaukee whole hog. I love this thing. It's just after making my life so much easier. I'm an electrician, that's what I do for a living. I do a lot of rewires and housework as well as industrial stuff. But when it comes to rewiring houses and drilling out old houses, especially a lot of the old big estates that we work on, they all have pitch point and stuff in them. This thing just flies through uh, floor joists, stone walls, everything for getting wires around the house. It's a great bit of kit and no more generators and uh, power leads. So it's fantastic. I might actually do a, a review video of this packout system. It's actually quite good, but it has a few flaws that I can go through. We'll just fly through it for now. This middle box being one of the flaws, it's a ton weight and there's no easy way to carry it. In the bottom box then, the one that's on wheels, we have the self-feed bits, my um, circular saw, or as everybody in Ireland calls them, skill saws. Now, skill saws weren't actually sold in Ireland, but everybody calls a circular saw a skill saw. It's like the way everybody calls a vacuum cleaner a hoover. So uh, if anybody knows why we all call them skill saws, even though we couldn't buy skill saws this side of the pond, let me know. Grinder, I use this the whole time, fantastic bit of kit. And uh, the one and only Sawzall um, reciprocating saw, but uh, the first one was actually a Sawzall by Milwaukee Tools. And so I think everybody calls a reciprocating saw a Sawzall this side of the pond as well. But uh, this thing is a beast. Again, all the emitting battery stuff. Again, on rewires, the, the circular saw gets used the whole time. I have to pick up floorboards and stuff like that to get basically pathways around the house for the cables. So uh, yeah, that's it. That's all the Milwaukee stuff. And that's the Milwaukee pack out again. I might do a separate vid on this. But for now, let's crack on around this workshop. Right, we're getting to the end of it now. So uh, this is kind of the last corner. This is kind of the thinking chair. Uh, it's kind of like a little small rocking chair. I just come out here sometimes and just contemplate life and what the hell am I going to do next. So um, if I need to think of a project, it's nice to sit here and just bounce for a little while. Maybe have a beer and escape the madness of my house and my life. And uh, yeah, this is quite a comfortable chair. Actually a present from my missus. So uh, yeah, I love it. Now this table, this is, I think is going to be one of my next projects as well. Whoa. There's a guitar busted on the ground. It's a cheap one, don't worry about it. So this table here, this was actually something that was getting thrown out. Can you believe? Um, it's a solid top on it. It's like an MDF top, but it's, it's 30 mil thick. It's over an inch thick. Again, it's a steel frame, fully adjustable. Um, what I'm actually thinking about doing with this is turning it into a router table. So I think that's going to be one of my next projects, is actually making this uh, particular table into a router, router table. I was going to affix all my grinders and sanders to it and just have it something that I could wheel out into the middle of the shop, plug stuff in on it and uh, use it as a grinding and sanding station. But it's actually such a nice top and so solid and flat that it would be an ideal um, large router table. So that's probably what's going to happen with this and that might be one of the next upcoming projects. So I'm going to see, I might get the Triton router table. It's kind of just a top and I might route it into this, sit it into the middle of this, cut in a T-track um, in the front of it for various attachments maybe. Or maybe I could just cut two T-tracks into this, build a fence and just build a router table from scratch. I'm kind of toying with that idea, so we shall see. But uh, yeah, so it's either the Triton router table we'll go into this or we build one from scratch. Let me know in the comments what do you want to see happen. Will I build one from scratch or fit in the Triton one? Let me know. There we go. Right guys, there we go. That's been my first shop tour. You can see everything I have and uh, everything that I still need to get. There's a lot of tools I have to add to this thing and it's also been a little celebratory uh, 200 subscriber shop tour. Um, a tiny little milestone, but a milestone nonetheless. So thank you for everybody that has subscribed to the channel so far. For everybody that comments and likes the videos, um, all interaction is welcome. And it's great to see that you guys are finding some of this stuff interesting. Hopefully I haven't bored you to death in this video yet. And if there's any questions about anything you've seen, you want to know anything about, anything I can 
answer questions on anything really just leave leave the comments below and uh, yeah that's it so that's been my first workshop tour plenty of projects and new machines to arrive in the next couple of months so stay tuned for that and as always hit like and subscribe and thanks very much for uh, following along I'll talk to you in the next one guys take it easy